All right, welcome to another episode of Comic Book Squares. We just want to remind everybody about our big contest for 2023. We're going to help find a new writer in comic books. We're partnered with Dream Foundry on this. And uh, just remember, the deadline is the end of September to get your uh, stories in. So to kick the show off, my name's Shane. I'm Paul. I'm Ben. And I'm Mike. Let's get this show started. All right. Well, welcome to another episode of Comic Book Squares. We've got another great artist with us today. Uh, Lori, just uh, do me a favor, kind of introduce yourself and tell us a bit about uh, the books you're working on. Um, hi, I'm Laurie Cunningham. I write under L.A. Cunningham, so you don't get confused me with the soccer player. Um, I am the editor-in-chief of ASAP Imagination, which is an indie publishing company and distribution company, and we have a digital bookstore, so we produce our own stuff, we produce other people's stuff, or publish, I guess is the better word. And yeah, so I, I work on a, obviously I do editing with that job, and then I'm also a writer, and I've written Sister Grimm, and I'm halfway through a four issue arc there and i've also co-written points of villainy points of virtue with hades who's the owner of asap imagination and he's been on the show and yeah i think that's the main stuff i'm working on right now i've put out some other stuff i have a babies with rabies project and i do host a drink and draw every week online and that's about it <laughs> i'll stop there, nice. <laughs> stop there. <laughs> i'm sure i'll well, think I, of other things but <laughs> yeah well i've I, you know uh, I've been uh, lucky enough to get a chance to read uh, all of your stuff before you came on. Um, it, all of it is just uh, really great. Um, I'm really, I, I'm actually a big fan of children's uh, literature um, and, uh, you know, just like Chris Von Olsberg and, and just, you know, uh, Shel Silverstein and just, I, I love kind of that stuff. And when I, when I saw that you had uh, the children's book, uh, I, I immediately wanted to jump to it. And I love the, you know, the kind of interactive elements you have to it where you kind of peel the page back to go to the next page. Um, and it's just a super fun um, piece. I absolutely loved it. Um, what was the kind of origin story for starting that up? Um, so it's like a children's book. It's not yeah. like, obviously, like you've read it. So it's like, it's yep. not like for children, but it's not right. like children can't read it. Like I've read it to my daughter and I don't feel like a horrible person, but it's basically like, <laughs> baby zombies versus parents and the idea is that it's like based around teething is kind of the gimmick and it's dystopian and then like yeah that, like I've to, I tell people it's like um Shaun of the Dead meets Mad Max but with babies <laughs> it's kind of the vibe I was going for and um yeah it just came from I, w I was living with my parents while we were doing some renovations and I think my daughter was around six months old or something so around that teething age and it was just a lot of my stuff is just a joke that goes too far. And it was basically we were just joking about, I don't know, rabid babies, obviously, like you do. <laughs> and it just kind of <laughs> turns into my mom's one of those people who like now that I write, she everything's like, oh, you should write a book about that. <laughs> and like some of them, sure. <laughs> and uh, some of them, no. But um, yeah, this is one of them where I think you kind of joke and you come up with one letter and then a few other letters. And then suddenly because it's an alphabet book. Right. And um, suddenly you're 26 letters later, you have a book. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, and then it's well, literally, well, you have a book. And then you're kind of like, well, what am I going to actually do something with this? Because it was a little out there. And then um, I could try to go and like, maybe I could query it and find an agent and stuff. But it's very niche. <laughs> right. Like, it's like, so like, like, I, like even selling it like at cons and stuff, like I'm looking for that person who has like a kind of dark and twisted sense of humor, a little morbid, um, like a little sick, <laughs> like kind of <laughs> zombie fans. And they typically need to know someone who's pregnant because it's kind of mm -hmm. like a baby shower gift. Like it's kind of like the go the F to sleep and K is for knife ball. And yep. I was for it, like, I think P is for pterodactyl, like all those kind of <laughs> ones right, like that. Right. So yeah, and it just kind of it just kept escalating essentially where I like, created it and like no one was really like champion in it. And I was like, you know, what? I'm still just going to go for it. And then put out a looking for an artist post on Facebook, got like 400 responses. And I'm like, wow. uh Oh, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> were interested and didn't really understand it. So I got like a very wide mix of replies. <laughs> and then I managed to find an artist who was typically a children's book artist. And like mm -hmm. his stuff was beautiful and like, but it was like super cutesy, like lovely, <laughs> like watercolor animals and forest creatures and stuff. And I'm like, if I ever write like a real children's book, like I want to come back to you. And he was kind of like, well, what's your, uh, like, what style are you looking for? 
And so I kind of described it and I was basically like, you know, the baby from Roger Rabbit. I was like, so mm-hmm. I th- baby Herman. And then I was, mm-hmm. there's a comic book artist. Um, shoot, I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Scotty, Scotty Young. Um, uh. So he kind of has like the Marvel. I think he's Marvel. I don't know if he's both. He could be all over the place. Who knows? But um, he right. kind of has like that kind of style. So it kind of mixed them together and then started drawing pages. And he was a good fit. And it was just one of those things like you just keep escalating and throwing money at it. And eventually you <laughs> have a thousand books in your basement. <laughs> and you're looking for, looking for people to buy them. <laughs> so, you know, and here we are. <laughs> that's awesome, though. I mean, you know, that's one thing about this, this show is getting a chance to meet people um, that, you know, no matter what your idea is, you, you had an idea and you took it all the way to completion. And a lot of people in life, you know, just go through their, you know, they're at their jobs and they, you know, think of an idea and they just don't do anything with it. So I, I think it's super impressive, you know, to be able to get to that point where you, you've got it completed um, and you've got an idea out of your head. I, I, you know, in my opinion, the more art that we put in the world, the better, uh, better world we have. Um, so you yeah. know, I'm just super impressed that you, you able to get it out there and it came out amazing on top of it. I think it's a super fun piece and you're right. It's, it's, it's somewhat, you know, niche, but I think it's, it's accessible enough that uh, anybody should check it out. Um, so, you know, if you're watching the show, you should definitely seek it out. It's, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it sold really well at horror con and like, <laughs> if that gives you like a vibe for it, like I went to horror con finally for the first time and like, it did well there because <laughs> nice. apparently that's the crowd. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, um, I, I, I saw it, you know, I, I picked it up, uh, on your site. Um, did, uh, do you sell it through Amazon or anything like that? Or is there any other locations to buy it? Um, so I don't, I, so I, I sell it in person. I sell it through my website, like Amazon. I can't, it, it didn't work for the, um, publishing on demand kind of thing because mm-hmm. it was the way I wanted it. It was um, like his, like his hardcover, which Amazon, I think they do it now, but it was like a specific size I had and like mm. all this stuff. And then I was going to go through Ingram spark, which is on uh, like another popular one. And they almost had it, but they, and I, but they didn't have the right size. And I was really like particular about it, what I wanted and stuff. And by then I think the artist had done all the, pa- I did the classic thing where I'm like, this is the size I want it. And then I got onto Ingram and I'm like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> And then I was just like, so I could like change it, but then it kind of messes with the quality and all that stuff. So you have to kind of like re rearrange stuff if you really want to. And then or like pay for, pay for him to fix things. And I was just like, you know what? I can do this myself. And then, but also like, cause by then like with ASAP, we were publishing a whole bunch of stuff. So we have the access to printers. And then my um, artist actually, he, he's been in the industry forever. So he was able to hook me up with some people over in, japan like he's over in japan even he's mm. from spain and he like speaks like five languages mm. one of those people wow. who just travels around and speaks everything and <laughs> a ton of experience but he's able to hook me up with some stuff so he also like was able to get me like he like designed like my bookmarks and stuff like that and um mm. i like this was like the one i was looking for like something because i wanted to make like a kit for parent like a survival kit so it has right. like the stickers and like it has like magnets and stuff so it has like these like the like all this stuff and then there's like the um yep. blueprint and stuff for the babies like yep. their strengths and weaknesses but it's, and it has teething rings but this was kind of the one thing where like i got him to make some ninja stars for the bath because <laughs> originally i'm just like i wanted what i really wanted was like um a tea something teething but mm. i wanted it to be like a hand <laughs> like a basic right. like you can get them for dogs where you just get like the severed hand like people have understood that that's funny for dogs but not for babies yet <laughs> which and they're they're wrong <laughs> so but then like once no. you go into the baby market there's like all this liability and stuff so i'm like ooh oh. like what what should i do here so i decided not to go with the teething i got like legit teething rings that were already like approved and then I was looking for the ninja stars and I did the same thing where I'm like, I found some place that like sold pre-made ones and I could get them fairly mm-hmm. cheap, but I ordered just like a little sample pack and they were like hard plastic. I'm like, Oh man, someone's going to mm-hmm. lose an eye and I'm going to get sued. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm like bath toys, <laughs> super foam, <laughs> fun right. bath toys. But so, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Again, I just like, just keep escalating. <laughs> like I said, now I have, now I have 1500 ninja stars oh in my, my base. <laughs> wow. So, you know, you know I how think, it happens. I think that's a, yeah. I think that's super smart though, to, um, you know, come up with a, uh, like a, 
a pack, you know, to go with your book. I, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen uh, anybody else come up with that kind of marketing plan. I think that's really smart on your, on your behalf. So, <laughs> well, cool, thanks. I know, cool I know idea. that like, I know that like p- when people um, release novels and stuff, like sometimes they mm. have the initial promotional boxes and stuff. And I think mm. that was kind of borrowed from that a bit, but yeah, the idea okay. is that like, it's a, if you just want the book, you can have the book, but it's also like a pre-made ready to go gift and stuff if people want it. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, well, let's go back a little bit. Um, you know, uh, uh, ASP, uh, AS, uh, ASP <laughs> publishing. Um, ASAP. How did you get a chance to meet? Yeah, ASAP. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's easier to do that. Uh, yeah. when, when did you get a chance to meet uh, Hades? How did you guys connect? And uh, what does that, uh, I guess, working relationship uh, go work like? Um, so we just met on Twitter. It was one of those things where I think I was joking about making friends as an adult and basically how you just have to like handcuff yourself to someone and just be like, this is this is happening or whatever. And then it just kind of turned into like jokes back and forth or whatever. And then I don't know, we ended up like DMing each other just like, oh, like maybe we should like work on a project together. Like that could be fun, like <laughs> similar senses of humor and stuff. And then um at the time when I met him I was pregnant with my daughter and then like so I was like not super motivated I was like kind of motivated to do something and kind of hadn't put anything out yet so I'm like you know what that sounds fun and then like we were kind of slow he was still like in his nine to five and he was um querying his comic at the time because same thing he like you always kind of want someone to like be that like one who sneaks through and people see you and then (laughs) lift you to the top and (laughs) suddenly you're like (laughs) <laughs> selling you're selling movies in Hollywood right, right. so yeah. so you kind of want that route and then it's the same thing it's like there's a lot of there's a lot of barriers and like noise to break through so eventually he was just like you know what? I'm just gonna start my own company and he's he's he was um working with his one artist buddy who was like maybe gonna do it with him and then it didn't kind of work out so he's just like started it and I was kind of on the sidelines being like go you like you can do it and then he was just and by then I'd like had my had my daughter and um I was kind of like in postpartum depression and like trying to write and it wasn't going going well. And he's just like, well, what if we like work on this project we were going to do? And we, originally the idea was to like write it around an event and have all these different perspectives about this one event. And he's like, well, you know, like I have a comic book universe where there's this big thing event literally called the event. <laughs> he's like, right. what if we do it there? And so it's just like more of like an imaginary or not like, ima- yeah, I guess imaginary is fictional world is probably a better word for it. But um, so we did that. So it's basically this huge catastrophic event in London, England. And then we each wrote eight short stories around it and from different just regular people's perspectives of like this like horrible event and then put it into anthology and made it a flip book. And we did the thing that I'm sure I'm sure he, he always mentions it because he loves it, <laughs> loves, the, loves right. telling it. But how we like each... um we like wrote these stories, but we never told anyone like who wrote what. So we we're basically uh, just like being all sneaky about it. And we're like, Oh, you don't <laughs> try to guess who, <laughs> like a few th- a few of them have come out because like from there, I like wrote a comic book and one of the characters, like that's <laughs> because I wrote her in the book. That's kind of like sucked, sucked me in. And so people know that that's that those two, there's actually two stories that, that are linked that kind of link the sides together and that people now know that those ones are mine, but the rest of the ones we've still been pretty tight lipped about. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's how that's and that's how I got sucked in. Well, yeah, that's super cool. I mean, we love Hades. We've had him on the show uh, a couple of times. He's just a, a super great guy. Uh absolutely love him. Um, so that's I mean, that's fantastic that you you were able to meet up with somebody and then uh, you know, he was able to help push you. Um, you know, I'm actually working on a on a kind of creative project myself and I uh, you know, came across a person who did something very similar, kind of, you know, acted as that extra push I needed to kind of get me over the finish line. And uh, I think that's that's amazing to because we need that as artists. You know, there's all this self-doubt, I think, a lot of times about our own work that we put out there. And, you know, we can be our own worst critics. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy that you. Uh, you yeah. You yeah, for sure. Stuff. Without him, I wouldn't be doing any of this, like literally any of the stuff I do and like the whole creative writing kind of thing, because like I was still trying to like be a a best-selling novelist at the time and like and I started to like write short stories and it was very much like when we started that project like he kind of gave me a head start because he's like I know you got a baby (laughs) so he's like well like go at go at a pace that like is okay and then I think I got like six stories done and then all of a sudden he's like just he's just like 
we should set a deadline for this. And I thought he was going to like pick something like a year from now. He's like, what if like two months from now? I'm just like, sorry. <laughs> and I, th- I don't yeah. know if it was exactly two months. And same thing, like we, I had like a friend who was like, who, had, who was editing for us. And I was kind of like, can you, can you do this? <laughs> She's like, um, maybe. <laughs> so, so, and he just like put it out of the world. He's like, we're, we're going to, we're going to release this in November. And like, we released it on November 30th. <laughs> so that, wow. yeah, like he's definitely like, definitely the push i need for a lot of things because like i have this like i'm not very good at self-motivating at all and like to have kind of an accountability partner like that and then like i i i'm sure he told you the story beside eight behind asap's name but it's like the fact that's called asap like that's literally how we operate we're just like as soon as possible it's just like just i I, like i felt to be fair like our unofficial motto is just get shit done get get shit out there (laughs) so it's like that's like kind of it's like because you can you can spend forever just not finishing something or just tweaking it and editing it or just being like you know what this isn't good enough like at some point you just gotta put stuff out there right i 100 percent agree um yeah a lot of time it what is that uh, that expression and uh analysis paralysis you just sit there and overthink it and you know keep noodling with it noodling with it and sometimes you just, you just gotta let's put it out You're yeah ready to go let's just do it yeah i 100 yeah. agree with that well, let's talk about uh, uh, one of your other pieces. Let me uh, make sure I uh, bring this up here so I can see it. Um, let's talk about uh, Sister Grimm here for a minute. Um, I got a chance to read that one. Um, yeah, really interesting uh, a story. I, th- th- this is I, I actually really like these kind of books um, that don't have a ton of dialogue and that there's just um, atmosphere and you're getting to know the characters through the visuals. And uh, so, I, you know, tell me a little bit about that process and how that writing <laughs> went. So originally when we were going to do Sister Grimm, it was going to be a graphic novel. So I wasn't like worried that there wasn't a lot of dialogue at the start. Cause I'm like, it's just going to be part of a book. Like there'll be a few pages of like not a ton of dialogue and then eventually we'll get into dialogue and stuff. But then we decided to, we wanted to split it up into four issues and then kind of do a compilation later on into a graphic novel. So, and then where I divided it, I like mentioned to Hades cause he was kind of like my mentor for like writing a comic. And I was just like, there's not a lot of, words <laughs> and, uh-huh. and i'm one of those people who i do like i like how the words kind of slow you down a little in a comic because like mm. other you can just like it, like it's only 22 pages and you can just rip through it something sometimes and you're like well yeah. i'm done now what's next like that was like however much right. money <laughs> like you yeah. can just like really go through things so i was like worried so i was just like should i have like an internal monologue or a narration mm. or like anything and he was very much just like no let the artist just tell mm-hmm trust the artist and which is like hard when I was new and it was also his first comic book. So we're kind of just like, yeah, we trust each other. (laughs) Like "Ah." (laughs) Like, the color and we're just like, yeah, like it's just like, it was weird trusting someone when you've like, neither of you've really done it before, but it was like pretty cool in that sense. Cause like we both just kind of worked with each other and there's a lot of back and forth. So it was like exactly that collaboration you hope for where it's like, it's like, it's not me kind of dictating a project like yes it's my story Mm -hmm. and like I have some vision for it but at the same time it's just like like I draw but I'm not like a comic book artist so I'm kind of like Mm. trusting him to like tell the story with his art and like all that stuff and yes it was like pretty cool and he has like this like kind of gritty water water style color or style Mm -hmm. and um we like went with kind of more limited palette like color palette and stuff so it was really cool to just kind of like make something mix it's like it to me it feels artsy <laughs> which i like yeah and then the, yeah. there is a second issue out already and the second issue is definitely more dialogue heavy because at the mm-hmm. like spoilers like at the end of the she like meets this guy and like we've already like mentioned who he is but but bennett is like kind of becomes like a bit of a sidekick and he's a ghost and he's like very chatty mm. <laughs> so he definitely okay. fills up some pages or some panels <laughs> in, in some future comics but like yeah i i really was like just wanted to set the mood for the first one so and i hope i did that and so far the feedback yeah. has been pretty cool with it so it like it's hard putting stuff out there and like not having a ton of confidence in it and then like kind of hearing people that you're like yeah that's like a really like neat way to do it so that's nice to hear <laughs> yeah 100 percent. yeah i really enjoyed it i i you know i don't uh, get a chance to really see that there's not that many books that are out there that that are willing to take that risk and, and do that um i feel like you know a lot of times they feel the need to to fill up the page with dialogue and, and not always is that necessary uh in in the art form i think 
uh, you know, creating this kind of atmosphere and, and letting, you know, there, there's a, I don't know if you've seen the film um, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Okay. Not for so a while you know though. Scene. I have like a bit of a yeah. bad memory for movies. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a scene where something terrible happens to a cop that's tied to a chair and um, they, the camera actually pans away from it during that scene. But there are, videos online of people that will vividly tell you, Oh no, no, it's definitely in the movie. Oh, the cut that I saw, they show it and it's horrible yeah. <laughs> because your mind fills in these spaces. Um, and so I feel like in a lot of ways that can happen, you know, with your book, you're filling it in you're, but you're filling in the story almost of yourself. Like, you know, asking your own questions, what's going on what what's happening with this. So I, I think it's a, it's a smarter way to go because it almost makes you as the reader become more engaged. Um, and, and, you know, filling in and becoming more connected with this character as you go along. So yeah, I thought it was really, really cool. I, I liked it a lot. Well, cool. <laughs> yeah. And I noticed, um, and so I was, I read um, points of villainy as well. Um, and uh, there's, it's, it's interesting because in there, the, the black and white piece the, that opens it up, there's also limited dialogue in that piece as well. Um, you know, that, and, and, is that so? I don't know. Is that something that you might, uh, you know, continue to do in in future works? Do you feel like um, being able to set up this the room and the characters themselves and kind of let that um, build in and of itself? Is that uh, I don't I don't know if it's like a style that you're kind of going for or is uh, well yeah that well that... that's the one where Hades and I co-wrote it so we and I think we okay. both have that style where we kind of just go with dialogue and then like because he's he was the one who told me to do it right so so it makes Ooh. sense that he also has that similar thing so yeah, for both of those stories it's very much just like the dialogue like one's a little more action-packed and one's kind of more like mm -hmm. s like the slow build kind of psychological messing with you but um yeah. yeah i think that's like i think that's generally the style like like i know we have um we have another uh charity project called animaltronic where we have basically um nine writers that are it's almost like the telephone game where you like mm. someone writes 10 pages and then the next person carries on 10 pages and you kind of hope the story is cohesive and like I'm the editor right. on it. So I'm just like, <laughs> plot holes <laughs> and all that stuff. Right. But um, it's like, it's interesting watching different people's styles. Cause like we very much yeah. wanted that, like every 10 page, it's like a noticeable style shift and we're going to have a different artist every 10 pages. So it like different ways, different things work for different, different stories i guess and i know for that one like it's kind of more of like an 80s like action hero cartoon kind of vibe mm -hmm. and so i think that like the way i did it changed a little bit and also just because i saw how everyone did it before me i think that it was like i changed my style a little bit but also just maybe the story just lends to like a different way of telling the story like there's definitely still people who like had the internal monologue and people who like had the ca more captions and stuff like explaining like mm -hmm. what things are it's like it's like it's like headquarters or whatever like like just so people know right, right? like which which i think yeah. is a definitely a fair way to do it because like yeah sometimes sometimes you do need things aren't as obvious and you do need to explain things and like that's not as important like it's like yeah this is headquarters but then let's move on and like tell the stories so you don't have to kind of right. like do all that to like ha hope that the readers get it i guess so yeah it's definitely it's definitely kind of like a give and take you got to decide where it works and i think yeah for sure it changes on different stories and how you want to do it so <laughs> yeah absolutely well very cool um so you know uh, the, you know both of these these books and, and um the children's book um, <laughs> came out relatively recently uh tell me a little bit about you know kind of your journey into becoming a writer um you know you had mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago about how you know you had this idea to be a, a traditional <clears throat> novelist what led you down this path and, and how did you get started in writing um i i feel like that's a long story kind of <laughs> maybe i maybe i can be quick about it but right, but um right. i think that like i ended up um in a very like kind of academic route growing up like like for a while i wanted to be a cartoonist and my parents bought me some like animal books where i was like drawing cartoon animals and stuff but i ended up like very like academic but i like tried to go into like to, into aviation because i wanted to be a pilot so i got my pilot's mm -hmm. license but then i was like kind of in a program that focused on the business side and that ended up not being like what i wanted to do and i ended up so i was still kind of like one foot in business and so i went into accounting and like hmm. i live in i live in calgary so we're, it's very oil and gas here so i ended up in oil mm -hmm. and gas and like <laughs> royalties and then 
uh, when I uh, eventually I kind of I was interested in this thing called engineers without borders, which you don't have to be an engineer with. So I kind of went over as more of like a financial accounting kind of role. And I went over to Ghana. And while I was there, I was doing a travel blog just to like connect with family and friends at home. So I didn't have to like, <laughs> here's all the emails and the daily updates from people. So and then it, so I did that. And then people, a few people are like, oh, you're a really good writer. And I didn't really think much of it. But I came back from there and I'm like, I don't really want to do accounting anymore. And tried switching into I switched it into more of like an environmental but still accounting but just environmental accounting like accounting for greenhouse gases instead of like I don't know oil <laughs> or whatever right, right. so it was still kind of similar lots of spreadsheets and then at the time my partner was like well what if you like took some creative writing courses I was like you know what that would could be fun so I did some continuing ed ones and I did the classic thing where I took like I'm one course short of like getting a certificate but I'm just like Mm, can't be bothered <laughs> but um and by now i'm sure all the requirements have changed and maybe i'm more courses short now but um yeah but i took a few and then um one of them was called publishing and promoting your work and one of the assignments was to join twitter which i was like kicking and screaming like not twitter <laughs> not social media i'm like such a late adopter for that stuff so i'm like fine and so like the job was to create an author platform and then once you start like telling people you're an author you're like man I should like maybe like write something. <laughs> so so I started doing that and I did want to like kind of write a novel and I had some ideas and started writing stuff and it just like turns out I'm really good at writing like the first 10,000 words of something and then after there I'm kind of like oh, I don't know now what happens like I know the ending but like what happens in the middle <laughs> like right. someone should write this <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. which is why you gotta get a co-writer but yeah so I, and then i kind of switched I, but i kind of like was writing dark fantasy and kind of con started connecting with the horror community a bit and there was like one guy who had a podcast where he was basically took submissions and they'd read it for you and add sound effects so i kept trying to write short stories but like there was a whole bunch of requirements and i kept not meeting them because like I'm, I don't know, like, I know people are like, you're the writer, you should be able to like control your stories. But I'm like, start writing a story. I'm like, man, this one needs to be like first person. I'm like, the one or like, this one needs and like, because the rules were like, they had to be. I can't remember, I think it had to be third person and the main character had to die. And there was like some other thing. And like, mm. I was like, ah, but the, like, the secondary character should die <laughs> or something like that. So I like, had a whole bunch of short <laughs> right. stories. And then then I met Hades. And then like, from there, like, we wrote the, the short story horror anthology. And then that's lured into comics and <laughs> corrupted and <laughs> I'm in comics and I still just do whatever though like I'm still kind of like in my newsletter I'm writing like kind of like a chapter by chapter novel like just oh. see, like seat of the pants like it's so like unpolished I'm just like a couple days before my newsletter goes out I'm like oh shit I should write like another chapter <laughs> and like editing <laughs> schmediting <laughs> I just like the final like I need a disclaimer I'm like the final book could be drastically different than everything people read in the newsletter but oh well just put stuff out there <laughs> that's what that's you gotta right, do yeah. whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it. so that's the general journey. I did basically my journey is just like people suggest something to me, and I'm kind of like that sounds kind of fun, and then I just do it. <laughs> and my path is like all over the place. Like there's still a part of me that wants to like do the best selling novel. <laughs> like again, I can't determine mm -hmm. if I'm going to be a bestseller, but like still do the novel and like put it out there and like hope like have the night Times square billboard and all that stuff but like i'm <laughs> nice. so fully in comics right now like i got and i got to like very tiny children that like i got no time for this stuff and like yeah. i'm already like the editor-in-chief of a publishing company like there's no time to like write a novel right now so little just taking little bites while i here and there and trying to finish some of the projects that i've already started like sister grim and <laughs> points of villainy and points of virtue and all that stuff so We'll see. We'll see well, where I, I end up. I, mean, I, I think I think you should be absolutely proud of yourself to, to be able to, you know, juggling all the family stuff and and putting the work out that you did. Uh, yeah. You know, that, it, Turns out you just stuff. sleep deprivation is like yeah. Just the, this the, that's my normal. Just constantly sleep deprived, deprived, yeah. deprived. <laughs> 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 well, I, I, I'm I'm loving it, and I'm definitely going to be a, a fan going forward, and and keeping an eye on all your work. So um, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> we got a chance to meet and and talk. And I, you know, hearing your your journey, I, I absolutely love it. I mean, everybody's journey is going to be completely different. I think this is great for people to to hear this. You know, somebody that's out there watching the show and and might be thinking about you know becoming a writer and 
you know, everybody's path is different. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the, the takeaway is, you know, if you can find somebody that, that, uh, can help, you know, push you over that finish line, I, I know I needed it for my art project and it sounds like it, it really helped you. So, uh, you know, hopefully people yeah. take away something positive. Yeah. Well, and I know with, uh, with Hades, like I, we definitely have the moments where like, we kind of like make a decision and then like a month later we'll be like, we'll we'll call that a learning curve because <laughs> it's like it didn't go as right. planned <laughs> right. maybe it didn't make the best decision we could have we're like it's fine that's a learning curve well future us will get it right <laughs> and it is that's like right. you just keep learning and it's like there's that's kind of why i'm just like just put stuff out there because there's no like good enough like you're good enough now just put it out and like you'll get better but it's like it's an everything everything that's artistic i find like it's not like it's like music like you can put out like a record or an ep or whatever and then like mm -hmm. 10 years later you're better your styles change just like whatever it's like it doesn't mean that your yes. ep your original ep or whatever was bad it just was different <laughs> yeah that's where you were at that particular moment in your life i think yeah, it, yeah you're absolutely right yeah well, uh, I know that we're going to put um, all of your contact information uh, kind of below the episode so people can find uh, all of your work. Um, and once again, I just appreciate you taking the time, uh, especially with everything you have going on to, <laughs> to talk and uh, and be on the show. I, I appreciate it. And uh, I I'm, I'm really feel lucky that we got a chance to talk and I got a chance to see some of your work. Uh, well, thanks. So thanks for coming on. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, this was another fantastic episode. Uh, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell so we can keep bringing you content like this. And we'll see you on the next one.